today's video is going to be one that I have prepared for in no way, shape, or form. But May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and so I sort of got a little bit inspired to essentially just share my story, I guess. I recently listened to an episode of The Happy Hour with Jamie Ivey. Let me look up the specific episode. So the one that really inspired me was episode 387. It's where Jamie interviews Deborah Faleda, and they talk a lot about mental health in the episode, specifically mental health as Christians, because there are Christians out there who believe that if you really trusted Jesus, if you really believed in the gospel, then you wouldn't have these struggles or you shouldn't be having these struggles. But if you flip it and think about it in terms of physical health, nobody says, well, maybe you wouldn't have cancer if you trusted Jesus more. So that episode is very inspiring. So I would definitely encourage you to go listen to it. It's a great listen, but it sort of inspired me to be a little bit more open about my struggles. And I guess I'll just start from the beginning. I think I'll really just kind of, I guess this will be like my testimony sort of, but as it relates to my journey with my mind, getting my head right. So as a kid, I was very friendly, but shy, I would say. And my anxiety, perfectionism tendencies started to show themselves very, very early. Specifically in math class, I would literally blame all my anxiety or at least like the start of my anxiety and panic disorder started with stinking math class in like third grade. I was, and still am, but especially when I was a kid, I was so hard on myself. If I didn't do it perfectly, if I didn't understand something, immediate tears. I was and still am such a crier. I cry all the time. So specifically when I was a kid, it was surrounding math class. So in third and fourth grade, I had an angel teacher who helped tutor me in math. And I have just awful memories of sitting at that stinking table and just not being able to control my crying. I had done the same thing at piano lessons before. That poor like high school kid who is just trying to make a little extra money teaching piano and his student is like crying. I was just so incredibly hard on myself. I beat myself up for not being perfect. I always think it's funny because my parents, I feel like so many parents have to kind of get after their kids for not doing well in school. I had friends who would get grounded based on their grades, things like that. And my parents had to sort of more so take the stance of like, it's okay to not be perfect. Like I was hard enough on myself that they didn't really need to punish me. So my whole life I've been very emotional, very sensitive, very hard on myself. And I would say probably right around that time is when I also started developing some pretty serious stomach issues. And not that it was super serious because I never got like a diagnosis that I remember, but they essentially chalked it up to acid reflux, hypoglycemia, things like that. So I would have a pretty irritating stomach aches that I still get to this day. And to this day, now at this point, it's hard to explain, but my, my stomach aches mirror the symptoms of a panic attack. So now when I feel nauseous or sick, I have a panic attack and vice versa. So it can be frustrating and I don't really know how to tell which one comes first. Most of the time, I'm pretty sure that it's the stomach ache came first and it just makes me feel so anxious that I eventually panic. So when I was a kid, my parents did all kinds of things to try and figure out what was going on with my stomach. I don't think we related it to my anxiety at the time, but I had been to psychiatrists, I had been on medications. I remember doing some type of evaluation where we did like the ink blot test, which was another time that I bawled because if you're not familiar with what they do with the ink blots, they show you a picture of an ink blot and you just tell them what you see. And I didn't know what the correct answer was, so I cried a lot. And I feel like I remember just thinking they all looked like butterflies, so I was like annoyed. I was like, that can't be the correct answer to every single ink blot. So I got so frustrated with myself. I took an IQ test that day, things like that. So I'm not exactly sure when I was like officially diagnosed with anxiety, but I've just always known I'm a very anxious person. 
I had an endoscopy at one point, which is when they stick a camera down your throat and into your stomach and take pictures and stuff. That's really gross. But I was knocked out for that and I don't really remember getting anywhere with those things. I kind of just learned how to cope. I had been in and out of therapy my whole childhood and Fast forward a few years, I met my husband when I was 16 and I had a really, really great couple of years in terms of mental health. I didn't really struggle with panic attacks anymore. I still had stomach aches. I did a lot of really big life things where I would get, you know, like nervous butterflies, but not panic. Things like graduating high school, getting engaged, getting married, moving to Germany. All of those things happened within like a six month span in 2015. So I thought I was like good. I was, I thought I was past all the anxiety and the panic. I thought I was good. And then while we were living in Germany, we had our first trip home to visit for our first trip. So it had been about a year. This was in 2016 and my cousin was getting married. And I remember I flew in the day that I flew in, my mom and I that night went to the store because I still didn't have a dress to wear for the wedding. And by this point, I had also gained a lot of weight, which also factors into all my mental health. I've suffered with disordered eating as well. So my mom and I go to the store and we were looking for a dress because I had gained so much weight and online was hard. So we're at the store looking for a dress and I remember telling my mom, like, I don't, I feel weird. Like, I don't, I don't feel good. I, I'm ready just... I just want to go home. So we went back to my parents' house. Cameron is with me this whole time. And I start to have those anxious feelings come up again. And these are the kind of anxious feelings where it's not like I'm worried about anything in particular. It's my heart is beating really fast. My hands are really clammy. I'm sweating. I feel feverish. I also kind of feel like I could throw up. There's like bathroom issues. And at this point I was able to fall asleep for a little while, but I woke up in the middle of the night with these feelings. So I'm awake. I think I either woke up Cameron or he just woke up because I was pacing and awake and things. And I asked Cameron to go get my mom. And keep in mind at this point, I hadn't seen my mom in like a year. So this was the first time that I get to hang out with my parents. I've always been super close with them. And now this is happening. So my mom wakes up and she comes down to comfort me because she had been through this with me so many times. My dad is eventually awake and so everybody is awake in the middle of the night trying to help me, trying to calm me down, trying anything to get me to feel normal again. And at this point in time, Cameron and I had only been married for a year and we had only known each other for two. And like I mentioned, I had several years of really good mental health. So he didn't really know how to deal with this, how to help me. So my mom was on the phone with her doctor friends, like, is this gonna be her trip home? We were home for three weeks, maybe almost a month, I believe, that first trip that we went home. But I eventually calmed it down a little bit. I went back to sleep. I can't remember if I had as needed anxiety pills at the time, but I eventually was able to fall back asleep and we actually decided, Cameron and I, to skip my cousin's wedding ceremony and I was able to feel better enough to go to the reception. So I did go to the reception. I have fun memories of that, but that was one of the worst panic attacks that I've ever had. So lots of stuff happened on that trip. One of our close friends from church actually passed away from breast cancer. So we were home to go to the funeral and that morning, again, very anxious, but I powered through and I was able to go to the funeral all the while and like in hell in my head. And Cameron and I fly back to Germany and we're home with the pooch and we keep trucking on, keep doing our thing, keep living our life. And it was in January. I actually think it was like January 31st overnight, so into February. I I wasn't feeling well the night before, it was just like head cold stuff, so I took some like cold medicine, just over the counter cold medicine that we had. And in the middle of the night, I woke up in an absolute panic. Probably what you would think of when you hear the word panic. I was breathing so heavily i jumped out of bed and i ran to the bathroom because i thought i was going to throw up i sat down in the bathroom and i got that cold medicine out and i was like reading the back trying to figure out what happened was i not supposed to take this i literally thought i was gonna die and i ran back to my bedroom 
and I woke up Cameron and I'm telling him you need to take me to the hospital you need to take me to the hospital something's wrong and my poor husband's like half asleep and he's like no no it's okay we're not going to the hospital you're safe it's okay and at this point I don't know that it's a panic attack I just remember my heart was beating so fast and so hard I don't know if I just thought I was having a heart attack I didn't know exactly what was wrong because it was a panic attack unlike anything I'd ever felt and I had had panic attacks before but this one was unlike anything I've ever experienced so this is the middle of the night I don't know it's probably like 2 or 3 a.m and the time changed so my poor husband is trying to go back to sleep he doesn't know how to deal with panic attacks he doesn't understand what happened and he woke up really early to go to work so he's trying to go back to sleep i facetimed my parents back home in michigan and told them about it and talked with them about it and i really did start feeling better i wasn't i wasn't panicking as much i was still on edge but i was past the actual panic attack and i'm laying there in bed talking to my parents and I started to feel really panicky again. And this time I did. I bolted up and I sprinted to the bathroom and I did throw up that time. So now I've been awake since 2 a.m. and now it's starting to be like 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. Cameron's long gone to work and I am still on the phone with my parents. They slept a little bit like while we were on the phone. And now I'm panicking again. And I, the only thing that could make me feel better was pacing. And even that didn't make me feel all the way better. So I was pacing around my house and my parents just spent all their energy talking me into going to see a doctor and getting medicine because my mom just kept saying, you don't have to live like this. And so I went to see my regular doctor and the poor nurse took my blood pressure, which was extremely high and all the while I'm crying. My blood pressure was so high that they had me come in every day for five consecutive days to take my blood pressure, which ended up being fine. Of course, it was just because of all the panic that morning. So I saw my regular doctor and he referred me to a psychiatrist and I saw a therapist for a while. I started taking medicine. My psychiatrist was an angel. I absolutely loved her. And so I've been on that medicine ever since and I still have panic attacks. None that are that intense. Now I'm able to identify them as panic attacks, so I'm able to stay a little bit more calm because that one in the middle of the night, I woke up in fight or flight when there was no threats, and so I, I, I didn't know what was wrong. I thought I was having a heart attack. Now I'm able to identify that it's a panic attack. Like I mentioned earlier with a lot of my stomach issues, I've noticed that a lot of my panic attacks are triggered when I have a stomach ache. So I keep a log now of my panic attacks. They're not any easier. It used to frustrate me that I didn't have a cause or an explanation. And I guess that does still bother me, but I don't spend nearly as much time dwelling on that. I generally sort of know what to try that can help. So. I can share some of those with you. I don't want this video to just be me like whining and crying about my life. Cameron has been incredible in learning how to help me when I'm having panic attacks because he's a very fix it sort of person. He just wants to fix it. When I'm having a panic attack, he feels helpless because there's nothing he can do to fix it. So he used to say things like, it's all in your head which is true, but it's not helpful. <laughs> but he has been incredible in learning what I personally need to feel better. There was one time, it's my favorite stinking thing ever. I love him so much. He was out hunting and he was getting home late. He went to like Burger King, went through the drive-thru or whatever and had a French fry with him when he got home. And I'm laying in bed and he knew that something was up and he got home and he sat next to me and he said what's going on and i said i've had a panic attack and you can kind of see side note how far i've come in my panic disorder because that first panic attack i had like i said it was very severe but i was jumping out of bed and i was running around the house and i was doing anything i could i couldn't think straight but i needed that feeling to stop now i am able to just lay in bed focus on my breathing i'm in hell up here but on the outside 
I try to just lay down, be calm. My bed is like my favorite place in the whole world, so that's where I usually go when I'm having a panic attack. And Cameron knows sometimes if we're, you know, eating dinner and I start to not feel good and I just say I have to go lay down. He knows what's coming. But this time in particular, he asked me what was going on and I said I'm having a panic attack and his go-to is what do you need from me? And sometimes I tell him exactly what I need and sometimes I'm like, I don't know. Sometimes I say nothing. But my love language is physical touch. I just love it when he touches me in any way. I love it when he rubs my belly, especially if my belly hurts and I'm having a panic attack. So I said, can you just put your hand on my belly? And I'm facing away from him. And he wraps his arm around my belly. And then I heard like a weird, like, munching noise. And I turn around and look at him and he's eating his french fries like a dog. Like he picks up a french fry and then to eat his fries with one hand so that he didn't have to take his other hand off my belly. And that's exactly how I would want it. I don't want Cameron to be beside himself trying to fix it for me because he can't. I'm already miserable. We might as well not both of us be miserable. I'm glad that he can keep a clear head. Now, the other day I was having such a bad panic attack. I think he could hear me crying, but I had headphones on, but I think he could hear me crying and he was in the dining room and next thing I knew, I was like doubled over on the bed and next thing I knew he was behind me. So Cameron helps me. Another thing that helps me is music. There are a lot of songs that really help me if I'm focusing on the lyrics for a while. Back in the beginning, like on that first trip home, when we lived overseas, it was Fight Song by Rachel Platten. Come to the Altar by Elevation Worship is another one that I love. And lately, Hold On To Me by Lauren Daigle is my favorite. I love that one because I don't think I'm a good prayer. I don't know what to say. I use some of the templates, but I'm just, I'm so bad at praying. I think about God a lot. I think about Jesus and the gospel a lot. I love to read my Bible, but I am not good at praying. Writing them down has helped me some. And during a panic attack a couple nights ago, I felt such an urge to journal and I guess pray to God, write down my prayer to God. I kind of treat them like journal entries because when I started to panic, I immediately put on the song, Hold Down To Me. And it just made me think this is exactly what I want to tell him. I couldn't come up with the words, but this is exactly what I want to say to God. So I got out my little journal and I started writing down some of the lyrics to the song and some of my thoughts along with it as well. So journaling helps, sometimes doodling helps. I love to draw on my iPad. I use the app Procreate and it can just be so satisfying. And I don't want anybody to write down these things that help me in a panic attack thinking that that's what will get you out of the panic attack or that's what will cure your panic attacks because sometimes these things don't work and even though I'm doing those things it only makes it a little bit better. In my head I'm still beside myself. I'm still in hell. I know that's how I've described it a lot but it's the only thing I can think of to describe what they feel like. But in that moment in a panic attack if I can do something that makes it just that much easier to handle, I'll try it. So it's been a long time coming. I used to hate the phrase, the term, I have anxiety because that's true of anybody at any given time because everybody can get anxious or nervous. Anxious is anybody can feel anxious at any given moment, which typically is circumstantial. I don't have any real triggers that I can identify other than overeating stomach aches, things like that, physical things that trigger a physical response. And it definitely used to be a physical and a mental response, but it's very physical now. I just feel so feverish and uncomfortable, like I'm gonna throw up. And my mind is kind of racing at the same time, but mostly just about how badly I want those feelings to end not necessarily anymore about am I gonna die what's happening to my body I don't really think those things anymore because my attacks are very common so I've had a battle with my mental health my entire life and that doesn't mean that I don't love Jesus and it doesn't mean that I don't take care of myself and it also doesn't mean that I've had a crappy life because I have two parents who love me and who love each other 
I have a husband who loves me. I grew up in a perfectly balanced, healthy household. I'm blessed in that I have a roof over my head and I have food to eat. So it's also a misconception that if you have struggle with mental health, then you must have something wrong with your life or you know something that's wrong with your circumstances that are causing that. That's not necessarily true, not in every case. So that's what I have to deal with sometimes. That's one of the burdens that I have to bear. And I've never really wanted to chat about it. I've never really thought to make a video about it because I didn't feel like I had anything to offer and it felt a little embarrassing because it's extremely hard to explain. I eat too much and that makes me panic and think I'm gonna die. It sounds so stupid, but that's what happens to me. I'm super lucky that most of the time when I have panic attacks, I'm at home, which makes me feel safer because my home is my happy place. I did have one time sort of recently where I panicked at work. Actually, I was getting my hair cut at work. I, my hair was being blow dried, so I was hot. The hairdresser started talking about cheesecake and that made me want to vomit because I didn't feel good. And I said, I have to, I just, you know, I'm going to go to the bathroom really quick. And I didn't make it to the bathroom. I was panicking and I fainted and I fell flat on my face. So that is my story with mental health and sometimes it sucks but I believe that through the strength of God I have learned to cope with that more and I know that sucks to hear because I always hated to hear that because I'm like well no I don't want to cope with it I want them to be gone well we all have our burdens to bear and this is mine it used to be very I would panic and then the anxiety would last forever it was so hard for me to get past after that panic attack that I had overseas at home in the middle of the night where I was, you know, FaceTiming my parents all night, I paced for about two weeks, maybe a little over two weeks. I would get maybe a couple hours stints of sleep, one or two throughout the day, and the rest of the time I was so anxious I couldn't sit down and I just paced all over my house for weeks. And I feel like I did some pretty serious damage to my hips in that process, but that was after one panic attack. And now I'm to the point where I can have a panic attack. I can try to focus on the fact that this will end. And then I, I can snap back and I can go about the rest of my life without having to dwell on how scary that was or how terrible that was. But a lot of my regular anxiety is hinged on, oh, I can't do that because what if I have a panic attack? Oh, I can't do that because what if I have another panic attack? Panic attacks are so scary and so uncomfortable that you will just do anything to avoid them. Which makes it difficult for me because I know that one of my triggers is overeating and I have to eat. So I'm definitely still working. I'm definitely still learning. I'm working with my doctors and therapists and things like that. So I don't need any advice on this video. That's not why I'm making it. I guess I just wanted to come out and share what I deal with because I think it's important and May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So I hope that you guys sorta of kinda enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss any future videos of mine and I will see you guys next time. Bye. You better not be pulling into my driveway because my dog will start barking so freaking loud. Ooh, that one was hard. Uh -huh.